Okay. Remind me to start the recording at the beginning of class. Uh, Cause I'm not used to doing that. <laughs> All do. right. Yeah. When will the first Moodle quiz be? Ah, let's see, share the screen. So it will be at the end of next week. I'll put it up on the 18th and then you'll have all weekend to take it. And it'll cover Caesar, uh, Genesis A and B. Oh, Y'all can't see me waving. Cover that, that, and Beowulf. So those three things. Oh, let me show you a thing about Beowulf. Uh, see, now like that, that's a great matching question, right? So look for stuff like that. Uh, you know, characteristics of a hero. Um, oh, this. I would definitely uh, familiarize myself with that. <laughs> All right, any more questions? Um, yes, uh, I tried joining over the app and it said I needed a password for the meeting. Is that just like my student ID? Yes. Um, you might have to log in through Moodle and I wish I could show you, but you, uh, there, there is a, there is a way to log in through Moodle without the passcode, but you would need to already have the app. I'm on my phone since I'm since I already have the app on my phone. I was able to go to Moodle and click click on the on the uh, join meeting, but I but I had to go select the option that was available if you already had the app on your phone. I don't know if that's the same if it works the same for computers. And um, it'll have stuff like login with Google, login with Facebook, but there's like a login with SSO. Am I remembering that right? Yeah. And Although that's the have, one you click, and then you'll be taken you have, to like the Moodle interface and log in that way. Yeah, but if you already have the Moodle uh, the program, you can just click Launch Meeting um, from Moodle, and it'll it'll bring up a little bit. It says Log In, but then it'll bring up the meeting yeah. uh, after a while by itself. See, that's why it's great that I teach in a technical, you know, uh, uh, the the tech school in the uh, state. Cause we got people that know shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. We always got tech yeah. support right here. Also, uh, I think um, there there might be an option for the person in charge of the meeting to remove the passcode. Yeah, but I don't know if there's an option. I don't, I don't have a passcode, but you have to have you have to be logged in through Moodle to get in. Like, it, I'm thing. looking at the password right here. It's like, oh, do o we have a password? Yeah. It's oh, like OTO34J. That's what the password okay. is. Okay, sorry about that. I meant to not have one, but I'm gonna make I um, had to up. log in through like a phone call. Mm. Yeah, I had to like call into the meeting. So I don't know if my attendance is logged or anything. Oh, what's your name? Uh Caitlin Blaylock. I sent you an email. I'm going to did you just add? Yes. Okay, I'm going to add you on my row. How do you spell Caitlin? All right. C A I T L Y N. And Blaylock, how do you spell that? B L A Y L O C K. All right, I got gotcha. you. Anybody else? Um, let's see, I don't have McDaniels or Madrino. Did they have I'm McDaniels. Up? Oh, okay, good. How I'm McDaniels Mc right here. How about McDrano? All right, that's our only absence then. Good, good try out on the first day with all this. Not, uh, good uh, job, team. That's it. Okay, I made myself a note to get rid of the password. Um, all right, any more questions about the way class goes? Uh, uh, like, I understand. Are these all like the the full selections, like the full on uh, commentaries about Gaul and? Artists? Oh yeah. Now they are in English, so if you're a purist, you wanna uh, look up the Latin, of course. 
So not not sections, just the entire. Oh no 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 no! Just those paragraphs. Oh okay. Um, book four, paragraphs twenty to thirty-seven, and book five, paragraphs one through twenty-four. So no no no, we aren't look, we aren't reading the whole thing. He spent ten years in Gaul and two summers in England. So. Here we go. Where's a good Caesar? Maybe that guy. All right, so let's invade Britain. Um, it the makes only sense. successful what, people to do so. What's that? The only successful people to do so. Yeah, um, well, we got the French coming over in a bit, but yeah, uh, the Brit, uh, the, um, was it 45? Hold on. Well, the Anglo Saxons were pretty successful, so. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the year was 56 BC for the first invasion in 55 BC for the second invasion. And that may seem a weird starting place, but uh, there are a couple of reasons for this. One, uh, this is the beginning of English history or British history and British literature. Uh, this commentariae rerum in Gallia historum is the first bit of English literature. Uh, now, everything we read for the first few weeks is not in modern English or anything recognizable as English. Uh, so it's either Latin or Anglo-Saxon or French. Um, and, you know, there are different ways for marking the beginning of history. But for me, as a kind of a guy that focuses on literature, uh, time when you start having written records for stuff is a really good starting place. So in August of 56 BC, uh, history started in England when Rome kicked in the door. Um, what was going on there before, we don't know. Uh, but he comes in, he's a very elegant writer. When you uh, take Latin, he's one of the first Latin authors that you read because he's so um, uh, easy to read. He uses really good Latin, but really simple. Uh, so it's easy to understand. And as a very successful general, it's important to him to figure out what's going on. Um, one of the reasons armies lose is that they lie to themselves. And so uh, Julius Caesar goes in, he wants to make his assessment as accurate as possible uh, because uh, if he doesn't, he's going to get his ass kicked. So let's take a quick look at four. Put some propaganda in there so he could share with people about how like savage they were and stuff though. Oh yeah. Um, this is all part of his long-term plan to take over Rome. Uh, and so he comes out looking rather well in these most of the time. Um, let's see. Now, uh, one thing that's confusing about Julius uh, Caesar is he refers to himself in the third person. Uh, so 420. So um, during the short part of summer, which remain, uh, you know, we're in Louisiana. We've got a good two, three months of summer left before it starts to cool off. That's not the case in England or France, which are pretty chilly. They're, they're way far north of where we are. Uh, and so their summers are much shorter. And not only does it get colder, but storms crop up. So uh, armies until recently tended to fight during the summer months. Uh, so he's been in Gaul for a while uh, for three and a half books. 
uh, and he finds that some of his Gaelic enemies are going across the channel to their cousins on the other side. You know, they're hiding out and getting support from there. And uh, the Britons will come over and they'll attack and then they'll uh, flee back. So he just wants to kind of tell them, don't mess with us, we're wrong, and get a look and see if it's worth conquering. Um, So basically, he's a reconnaissance in force. He doesn't do a lot of uh, um, conquering. He does, you know, they have some skirmishes, but he doesn't want a super major fight at the beginning of, you know, at the end of summer, at the beginning of fall. Uh, so uh, they have trouble getting on shore. And, you know, the water is choppy. Uh, he finds it defended pretty well, and he's only able to get them to go forward by uh, running to the eagle, uh, which was the standard of Rome, and then marching on it up to the, um, oh, crap, got excited and knocked my earbuds out. Uh, marching to the land, and normally in a Caesar battle, they had the battle won just based on his brilliant strategy, but there are a few times the troops would get into trouble and he would rally them by running to the front center and leading the way. And then the other troops were trying to let Caesar down. And so they follow him in because, uh, you know, he's a very popular uh, general uh, with his troops. And, uh, and, you know, it's been a while since our leaders led from the front. We're more used to people uh, leading from behind. Um, I think it was the Whiskey Rebellion. George Washington put on his old uniform, probably had to have it let out a bit, and uh, led the army. Uh, but that may be the last president that did that. Um, certainly anybody in my memory has. Uh, led from the White House, not from the front. Okay. Um, oh, let's see what that says. So, um, why do we then uh, study Rome? Uh, in their invasion of Britain. And uh, it's not just that history starts now. It's not just that the literature starts now. This is the first work of English literature, um, by which I mean literature about England, uh, not in English or by somebody who is English. But uh, it's a snapshot of England in the first century BC. The Romans will be back, and that's the other thing. Uh, for the rest of the quarter after today, it will be post-apocalyptic. Uh, Rome will collapse, uh, and even before it collapses, it gets attacked successfully in 410 AD. At that point, uh, Rome is starting to look kind of weak, and the people in Italy start saying, why do we have all these legions over there in Britain when what we need are legions between us and the Germans up north? We've got these Germans to deal with. Get those legions back. And so Rome marched out. And Rome had brought a level of civilization to Britain that had not been seen before. Um, you know, they did stuff that's still there today, like Hadrian's Wall. They did amazing things that the locals had never seen. Like there's one city uh, today that's named Bath. You want to guess why? Because the Romans built a bath. <laughs> and uh, they weren't used to baths. And, uh, you know, the Romans, uh, Italy's hot. They love their bath time. It was kind of, you know, siesta. And so they would have these big public uh, areas, kind of like um, 
sauna kind of thing. Uh, and uh, they brought in stuff uh, you, you find at Hadrian's Wall when they do archaeological digs. Uh, the Roman troops had dates from uh, the Middle East, uh, you know, the, the little um, fruit. Uh, and, and other stuff from around the Roman Empire. So it plugged them into something bigger. Uh, it was a high level, very, uh, in some ways, modern civilization. And ever after, they are always aware of the fact that they lost civilization. Uh, let's take a look. Here we go, Polybius. Can you hear my cat? Yeah. Playing a bit. He likes to help. Ah, here we go. I'm going to share the screen again. Uh, can you all see my, the screen? Yes, sir. Great. OK, so. Um, why Rome? Um, because for us, you know, I'm coming, I know I'm from Eurocentric uh, perspective, uh, but A, we're studying British literature, and also uh, B, we, we brought with us a lot of the sensibilities uh, my ancestors did that we had back in Europe when we came over. Um, so, for people from uh, Western Europe, it's always wrong. It's always wrong. It's always wrong. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you look over here in the Middle East, uh, you've got Mesopotamia. Uh, before it was Babylonia, it was Sumer. Uh, Sumer gives way to the Babylonians, they give way to the Assyrians, or maybe I have that backward. Uh, then the Medes and the Persians, then the Parthians, and then the, um, the, um, the Caliphate. So they've all had a high level of civilization for uh, 10,000 years in that area of the world. And when one civilization fell, another civilization kind of moved in to take its place. Look at Egypt. Uh, Egypt, its history as an empire is so long that the end of the e Egyptian empire is closer to the present than it is to the beginning of the Egyptian empire. Uh, so for over half of recorded history, there's been an Egyptian empire. And when Egypt fell, do you know who took over then? It was Alexander the Great coming in from Greece. Um, and the Greeks did not destroy civilization. They didn't come in and uh, plunder and destroy. Well, they kind of plundered, but um, they built a city, named it Alexandria. It became the center of uh, learning in the ancient world. It was like their Harvard. Uh, so it wasn't exactly like coming in and destroying uh, the civilization. Now let's look at Rome. I think I didn't get Rome in there. Is this Western Europe? Ah, this is a little better. Except it's tiny. 
All right, so uh, this is the part of the world that Western Europe knew about. Um, you know, you get Far East, there's a lot of stuff going on they don't know about. Uh, but if you look at uh, Western Europe, this area here, Civilization came rather late to this. Uh, over here, uh, civilization is 10,000 years old. Uh, over here, you're pushing it to say 3,000. Um, and there was no one central civilization before Rome. It's like you've got the Etruscans, yeah, they're there. They're rather civilized. You've got some Greek outposts, but most of it is just barbarians doing barbarian shit, right? Uh, my ancestors, uh, the, the Scots that you're going to read about, um, uh, it, taking their clothes off and painting themselves blue and running around killing people. Um, so Rome creates this great Roman empire that lasts a thousand years and then it falls and what follows it? What do we call the next period? Medieval or the dark ages. Dark yeah, ages. the dark ages. Now, if you ask a medievalist, uh, they get pissed off when you call it the dark ages, but uh, I'm more focused in ancient civs. <laughs> <laughs> For me, yeah, it was the apocalypse, right? Civilization collapsed. People were thrown back on their own devices. Did any of you watch Walking Dead? Wasn't it called the Dark Ages because they lost all that information about Rome and stuff? All the right, yes, and everything else. You know, Romans brought in the knowledge of Greek and philosophy. They brought in Judaism and Christianity. You know, all of the stuff that. Uh, you know, all the science, all the philosophy, all the religion, all the culture, all the stories, uh, and most of it collapsed. Um, and you, would, you fall back on tribalism. What we're going to study about next period are these tribes, which is the normal human uh, way of existence. If humanity is about 300,000 years old, it took about 290,000 years to build the first city. <laughs> so what were we doing for most of our existence? We were in little tribes. And when human civilization collapses, we fall back on the tribe. It's just the way we do things uh, kind of instinctually. And to build up something bigger uh, takes a lot of organizing. But if you see Walking Dead, that's what they've done. Uh, so the Dark Age is like Walking Dead without the zombies. Um, and they remembered Rome, though. Uh, for one reason, the little bit of civilization going on throughout Western Europe, where was it coming from during the Dark Italy. Ages? Italy. Yes, uh, specifically the church, which was located in Rome, the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, the emperor had been the Pontifex Maximus. Uh, now it's the Pope who's being the Pontifex Maximus, but uh, they're keeping the Latin language alive. Uh, you've still got a common language. You can move around uh, Europe and speak at least to the local priest. And they're keeping learning alive. Uh, the monks would have a scriptorium, which is a place where That's they made all the illuminated manuscripts. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. The um, lining and stuff. Yeah, you had to do it by hand. Uh, and, uh, Your mic's have, messing up. What's that? Your mic's messing up. Oh, of course it is. Um, Hold on, let me have a mic. I'll see if this helps.
I'm not sure how to get it to work. Now that's the problem with the Zoom. My tech support with you guys can only. All right, can y'all hear me now? Oh, hold on, I can't hear you. All right, can you hear me now? It sounds a little bit better. Is it better? And uh, I feel like I should sing, but maybe not. Um, let me see. I'm gonna. Can you hear me now? Uh... Okay, I think it still may be the computer. Could y'all hear that when I went away? A little bit, not a lot. All right, I'm not going to figure this out. Um, all right, so uh, Rome collapses. The little bit of civilization that's continuing is still Rome. Um, pretty soon the church will come back to Britain. Um, and, uh, you know, start writing down stuff. The, Ang the, the uh, monks uh, create an alphabet for the Anglo-Saxon language. They start writing stuff down in Anglo-Saxon uh, so that they can reach Anglo-Saxons. Uh, and so little by little, they're trying to rebuild civilization and they're always doing so with the idea of rebuilding Rome. Which leads to the basic insight of Ah. Y'all ever play Jenga? Uh, so the basic insight of conservatism is that civilization is like a giant Jenga block. And it's difficult to construct and easy to knock down. And therefore you should be very careful about any changes you make to the Jenga block. Otherwise, the whole thing may collapse. Uh, and so in the Western tradition, uh, this is rooted in the knowledge that civilization can be lost. We have lost civilization before. And so the conservative, the truly conservative wants to try to preserve civilization and make small modest changes when necessary, uh, but not overdo it. Uh, now, we live in an ironic time where the people who call themselves conservatives in our country want to play Jenga with a bowling ball, and let's uh, see what we can tear up in, you know, something, something, uh, you know, and then uh, it'll be great. Uh, well, was it great after Rome fell? And do we know what's going to destroy civilization? Um, I mean, why did Rome fall? Stagnation. Anybody got any theories? The, uh, the people got at the top got too decadent and, uh, and stuff. And if you get five Roman historians in a room, how many opinions are you going to get about why Rome fell? I mean, a million. I, a million. I can't hear. I think I may be... This may be messing up our train now. Okay, how many opinions will we have about why Rome fell? One for each of them. Six. Royce, I think you're muted. Oh, I'm muted. Uh, ah, now I can hear. <laughs> okay, can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Okay, great. Okay, something happened when I plugged that in. I'll try to figure it out between class. I can do tech mode and then I can do teach mode. I can't do them both at the same time. So, oh, five Roman historians in a room. Uh, how many opinions about why Rome fell? I'm five. At least five, maybe six, maybe 10. Because we don't know. Was it the plague? Uh, was it? you know, the rich people taking all the money and, uh, you know, wiping out the uh, yeoman class, you know. There are a lot of opinions about why Rome fell. Um, 
the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, which runs into many, many volumes, but I think his uh, basic thesis was that Rome fell because of Christianity, which uh, sapped the moral fiber of these stern old Romans and made them all squishy uh, snowflakes, and therefore uh, Rome fell. Uh, the Christians don't like that theory. Uh, and uh, Augustine wrote, the city of God against the pagans as a response to the thesis. Uh, okay, so uh, here we have, let me note, hold on. Oh, I think I may need to unshare. Okay, and then reshare. Yeah, I'm going to share my computer sound. And optimize for a video clip. I'm going to try a video clip. We're going in. Hello? It's a little loud. It's a little loud. You're here early. I thought I was late. Check again. They call it daylight savings. They said it would help the farmers. They didn't expect it to destroy everything else. It gets dark so early now. We gained an hour, but we've lost light. Wait, didn't we lose an hour? No, we, we spring forward, fall back. Or is it fall forward? It's too confusing. Don't you see what's happening? All the people are going to have to change their clocks back. We have to warn them. Early bird catches the worm. Tina, you have to come with me. Where are we going? We're going to a place where daylight savings doesn't exist. They call it Arizona. You can't run from this. It doesn't add up! Don't you see? Daylight savings is just an imaginary construct! It's daylight saving. It's not plural. This is tearing us all! Apart! Too late! No, remember, we gained an hour! What time is it? We're running out of time! You wanna buy an hour? You're not afraid of the dark, are you? Where, select the clock. Where's Sola? Oh. No, select, hold the button okay, menu. Okay, okay. Select the clock icon. Uh, where's, okay. Click the I'm clock icon. Oh, Jesus, you're back at the menu. Nacho punch! All right. So, could y'all hear that? Yes. All yeah. right, so uh, in this movie, trailer uh, I showed it to my son and he keeps asking is there a real movie that we can watch uh, but I think they kind of filled the trailer up. so what is it that brings about the end of civilization in this particular movie daylight savings, time. Daylight saving. it's not right. plural that's my favorite line from the whole thing because I'm an English teacher um, and I didn't really know it wasn't plural until I saw that so the conservative mindset, and by the way, we're pretty much teetering on the edge right now, right, with this COVID shit. I mean, look at us. Uh, we're all in our bunkers uh, trying to communicate through the apocalypse without dying. Um, so, yeah, civilization is a more fragile thing than we like to think. Uh, and it can be lost. This may be the beginning of it. I don't know. I am hoping not. Um, but we've decided, okay, this is beyond our ability to deal with on a national level. Let's push it down to the states. And the I think all the, yeah. Go ahead. I think all the technology and the internet and stuff we have nowadays is a good safety net for it. We've still got all the information there. So far. Um, but you put a hurricane coming through. We all hear when the hurricane came through and wiped out the grid. 
and all of a sudden the phones aren't working and the electricity's out and that means there's no internet. Um, so uh, back up your internet. <laughs> Print the internet out, folks. That's the uh, lesson. Um, so where were we? Um, oh, we were trying to rebuild wrong. I don't know why this, oh, this is okay. Uh, we're trying to reestablish them. And, uh, you know, you've got experiments like the Holy Roman Empire which uh, Wag said was neither holy nor Roman nor an empire. Uh, but um, everybody wants to be like Caesar. Uh, in fact, the uh, German word Kaiser, which he was the leader of Germany in World War II, the Russian word Tsar, they both come from the Latin word Caesar because everybody wants to be Caesar. And for 2,000 years, well, 1,400 years, uh, we've been failing to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. No, okay. I'm gonna have to take off my background, so uh, try not to look at my room. I can't show stuff. No, well, that didn't work. Oh. Ah. All right. Does anybody know what that is? A uh, scent? I don't think so. Did I do it wrong? No, it's notes with one line. It's... Yeah, the scents only have one lines, yeah. <laughs> I think I could be wrong. That was that was right. No, no I did it wrong. Oh, I did it wrong. Oh, okay. Lock me in our room for six months. Just draw whatever makes sense. Okay, try this. Isn't that the Latin E? It's close. It's supposed to be the Euro. Let's see if I can That's find it. it. Oh. oh, okay. I think yeah. that was it. I think you had it. I think I did have it. it. Here we go. I'll put it on my phone. Yeah, that there that's she you. is. There it is. Am I right? Hold on. Ask something. Okay. So is my video the right way? Can y'all read this? It's upside down. It's upside down, yeah. It's no, I mean the the that part. Oh yeah, kind of. I can't read it. <laughs> it's a bit low quality, but well, can you, can you read this? Read yes, it's not okay. backward, it. right? No. no, it's not backwards. Okay, because you can flip the thing. All right, so euro. Uh, the euro is the common currency uh, in the. European Union. Of course, uh, England just Brexited, right? Uh, well, not, not, not yet. They're still trying to work it out, but they, they still say they're going to. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so anyway, uh, just a very few years ago, they introduced the Euro to big uh, fanfare. And the guy who was in charge of it, the Euro, said, today, Europe has a common currency for the very first time since Rome. So Rome, they had a common currency. You could spend that money anywhere you went. Now, we have this common currency for the first time in Rome. Since How is the Euro doing in 2020? Shit. 
Yes, the euro sucks. So rebuilding Rome has turned into a very difficult thing to do. Uh, as badly as we've wanted to, we've had a hard time reinventing Rome, uh, partly because we wanted to reinvent the wrong Rome. Which Rome have we been wanting to reinvent? The Julius Caesar Rome. Um, let's see, how do I get rid of this? Sorry, the uh, Zoom, it's different attending a meeting from leading a meeting. Uh, oh, here we go. Anybody know who that guy is? I don't think you're sharing screen. screen. Oh, of course not. <laughs> okay, how do I do Napoleon, that? Napoleon, though? I'm going to take okay. a Napoleon. No, Napoleon wanted to be the first consul. He wanted to be Caesar, right? Damn it. Yeah, I don't know who that is. He's trying to guess it. Without uh, even seeing it. Before he pulled it up. Need a better look. Can you see him? Uh, that looks like. It says Cincinnatus up in the in the bar. Ah, very good. And who was that? No idea. I'm just reading. Right. <laughs> okay. So we're lucky. The guy who Cincinnati was named after. Yes, exactly. Um, why can't I see y'all anymore? Ah, here we go. Some of you are coming. You know, anyway. My little sidebar disappeared. Okay. Um, so, Cincinnati was the hero to one George Washington because he lived during the Roman Republic. Am I still sharing the screen? I can do that. Um, and he was a senator. He had been kind of dissed by the other senators. And so he went back to his farm and started plowing his farm. See that? That's an old Roman plow. And this was from a period when Rome was still relatively poor. And people of the upper class would do actual work. I mean, uh, you know, by the time of Julius Caesar, the rich are incredibly rich. And imagine uh, Donald Trump plowing a field, um, you know, or uh, Warren Buffett or, uh, you know, uh, any of the rich people in our country, uh, Zuckerberg, you know, they aren't going to plow a field, right? Uh, but at this time, uh, even the senators were comparatively poor and would often do manual labor. Anyway, the enemy appeared. I think it was the Etruscans, but I could be wrong. And the Senate met in emergency session and said, oh my God, what do we do? Uh, we know our best general is Cincinnatus. Uh, we are going to appoint him dictator. Now, the dictator had vast powers, but for a limited time, normally six months. And so uh, you could do anything you wanted to. Uh, so Cincinnati went out, defeated the enemy quickly, came back to Rome. He had like four months left as dictator. All powerful. You could banish your enemies. You could kill your enemies. You could confiscate their stuff. You could write laws. You could repeal laws. You could name every street after you. It'd be like, uh, you know, Peaches in <laughs> Atlanta. Just every street named Cincinnati. Uh, be real confusing on the map. So what does Cincinnati do with his vast and limited power? He goes back to farming. He goes back to farming. And that was George Washington's hero, and he did this twice. Uh, he did it once after the Revolutionary War when he went back to Mount Vernon to farm, and he did it the second time after his second term as president. He said, eight years is long enough. I don't want to be president for life. Uh, just want two terms and back to the farm. And for a long time, that was an unwritten part of our understanding that presidents would only run twice. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt broke that because, uh, well, the country needed him so much, right? 
And then after he died, we passed an amendment that limits it to two terms because George Washington and because Cincinnatus. Um, the third time that George Washington applied this was in the Constitutional Convention when they were trying to decide, do we want a king or do we want a president? And, because, and if Washington had said, I will be your monarch, they would have elected him the first king of the United States. But Cincinnati, he stepped down and so Washington said, no, that's too much power for too long, which was another key insight of conservatism within the Roman system. And that is that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Uh, the problem with Julius Caesar is not that he's a dictator, it's that he's a dictator for 25 years, which they think is a lot like when you're an old man, like me and Caesar, dictator for life. And that's very close to being a monarch, which is why they killed him. So when the United States was putting together its government, we went to Rome and people like Cincinnati uh, to create, to construct our, um, our government. Let's see if I have a chart of that somewhere. Here we go. All right, so here's the Roman uh, constitution during the era of the Republic. They had an executive, the upper class, uh, uh, executive were the two consuls. Uh, the tribunes were for the lower classes, and because there's so many uh, lower classes, they have 10 tribunes. In the legislature, they have the Senate and the Comita, and then they have a judiciary. If you'll notice, this is basically the American system. Um, here we go. This is uh, One Nation Under God by John McNaughton, who makes a lot of money selling bad art to dumb people. And in his version, the Constitution is being handed down by Jesus. Uh, but in fact, of course, our Constitution comes from Rome. If you look at these buildings in the background, that's the uh, Supreme Court, that's the Capitol building. Uh, what? architecture are these buildings modeled on? Classical. Classical Greece and Rome, right? So let's do a thought experiment since we don't have a real time machine. If you could take a time machine out and pick up some people Oh, let's say uh, somebody from Elizabethan England in, a, in a London, uh, go to the Kremlin, take somebody from there, Forbidden City in China, uh, Jerusalem, of course, because Jesus, and then one person from ancient Rome. We drop them all right here in front of the Capitol. Who's going to feel most at home? Who's going to say, I know what this is? Roman. The Roman. It looks like Rome. Okay, so this is uh, Congress. That's not a very big picture. Maybe this is a bigger one. Yeah. Crowd. Okay, here we go. So uh, on either side, maybe I can make that work. Ah, here we go. Do you recognize that? Yes. What is that? That is that is an axe surrounded by sticks, which is a symbol which is a symbol of power from right. ancient Rome, and also and also uh, 
stolen by fascist Italy. Right, right. Well, they love to uh, get the symbols of the past. You know, once the swastika was not a bad symbol before the Nazis got a hold of it. But notice here, that's the fascists. And we put that in the House of Representatives to remind us of the fact that we're from Rome. I can't tell how many sticks that is. I have a feeling it might be 13 for the original colonies, but could be wrong. All right, so uh, the United States, we uh, dusted off the fascists, we got the bald eagle as our symbol. And if you look at Europe since World War II, it's the longest period of relative peace uh, since Rome, the longest time without a major war. And why is that? Uh, economic integration. That's Most. part of it. That helps. But there's another thing, right? Who came and didn't left leave after World War II? The United States. The United States. Uh, we we came in uh, World War One. After the war was over, they said, "Thank you. You can go home now." And um, you know. We've got it from here, we'll take care of it. Uh, just a few years later, World War II, uh, after World War II, we said, eh, ah, you know, kind of like it here. We're gonna help you already build, but we're gonna leave a lot of bases around Europe. And so the Eagle came back, uh, the legions came back, only this time they're the legions of the American Republic instead of the Roman Republic. And we said, you folks get along, uh, and, you know, Europe, they're able to behave if they've got a gun to their head. Who knew? Uh, and so, uh, they finally got Rome back, in a way. Uh, but now we're kind of teetering on the edge, so who knows what will happen. All right, any questions? I have one question. All right. How do they speak? Uh, other than other than the Louisiana anthology, uh, do you have do you have any plans for us to do any like other other writing, or is it just uh, this we will do Louisiana the research anthology? paper? And there's a lot of stuff uh, linked up for the research paper. So follow the link. Uh, there are exercises, there are examples, there's lectures, there's notes. Uh, so yeah. Because this is a literature class, I'm not going to teach the research paper, but there's a lot of material on it. And if y'all have questions after you've gone through it, oh, I can show it to you, hold on. I keep forgetting. I can share the screen. All right, back to my homepage. To 10 syllabus. And research paper. Let's see if that's the right link. All right, let's talk about the research. Oh, yeah. So, got a lecture, thesis exercises, how to do a bibliography, research paper, which I grade somewhere. Oh, here we go, the grading lecture. Right. So, yeah, that's a pretty good bit of material. Go ahead and uh, wait, before you start on your paper, read over that. It is a literary research paper. So it's about one of the works we're reading this quarter. Um, and it's a standard literature analysis like you did in 102. And if you've gotten a little vague on 102, uh, that's what all the notes are for. I have like several methods of applying, you know, analyzing literature. Mandy's uh, got a question in the group chat. Oh, thank you. Let's see, chat. Uh, metaphors. Uh, we'll talk about stuff like in class. And if you have a question after we talk about it, you can ask now. 
Uh, anybody have a question about Caesar? Okay, plus there'll be stuff in the notes, but uh, yeah, certainly you can email me if you have anything to follow up on. Yeah, I would start reading today. Do we need to start reading today? Uh, I would start. Um, try to pace yourself so you're not doing all the reading the night before. It's set up, you know, around the Tuesday, Thursday kind of thing. So uh, just remember we're two days talking about it and then five days between. Uh, that we aren't talking about it, but that gives you time to do some reading. You'll be posting those notes uh, later? They are posted. Let's see. Can you see that? In Moodle? Can you see my screen? I, not your screen right now. Am I sharing? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's going to be a long quarter, people. <laughs> All right. Can you see it now? Yes, yes sir. They click on that. Usually there'll be some notes. Not a lot of notes for Caesar. I may put a link to my other notes about Rome. All right. All right, any more questions? So we will be back here on Tuesday and we will talk about Anglo-Saxons. So it will be post-apocalyptic. Civilization will have fallen. We'll all be... Uh, uh, going through the garbage, trying to find something to live on. Okay, um, y'all sure? Just sounds like another Tuesday for me. Right, another Tuesday during the COVID. <laughs> Love it. How do y'all even help, you know, get together? Like, we don't. I, I've been getting with it other people. I have like two friends who I know are safe and I get with them like every day. Well, do y'all know where Hillcrest School is? I live uh, near Hillcrest School on the north side of town. It's got an outside like basketball court and every afternoon it is full of tech students playing shirts and skins and yeah there is no social distance. There is no masks. There usually aren't even shirts and so uh uh Yikes. What should you hang out with? <laughs> well, that's well, that's their decision. You can't. We can't stop them. That's you can't something. stop them. Uh, I guess we could call the cops, but I don't. I'm not. Yeah. A real, I've never been much of a narc. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I think the police have a lot more uh, problems than uh, people than people playing basketball. Right. Yeah. yeah. Rustin's got stuff to do <laughs> there. all right i'll see you guys tuesday right. i'm about to uh exit bye all right, all Later. right. Bye. stay well <laughs>